Having coffee with the cops of the Manchester Police Department is starting to become a regular thing. For the second time in the past few months, officers of the town's police department gathered at the Manchester Community Library for a sit-down with local residents to hear their concerns and answer questions. At the same time, it was an opportunity for the police officers to explain their procedures and the way things worked at the department. Sergeant James Blanchard, along with Corporal Chris Mason and Patrolman Ryan Madison, Darren Jennings, and James Basong, met with town residents on Tuesday, January 9th. They talked about what life was like on the other side of the badge and uniform and how residents can help. Probably what is your most worrisome, what is the thing that takes most of your time? Um, paperwork? Well, paperwork is very time-consuming, <laughs> yes. Paperwork. Paperwork is very time-consuming. Like that's computer. Yeah, I know, absolutely. But if there was ever a need for undercover, uh, any of us would, would uh, you know, disguise ourselves and <laughs> yeah. to play out on the street. You know. He stands out in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, he stands out. Tall. Careful tall. drinking that coffee too, it's going to stunt your growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything we can do to help you? Yeah, I think uh, it kind of falls back on if you say something, say something. But sometimes people feel like it's a bother to call the police department with information that might not seem all that important, but we would much rather get any tips that might, you might find alarming. I mean, please pass it on to us because I mean, that might be something that uh, would certainly help us in any investigations or just knowledge of what's going on in the community. One of the, one of the best things you can do is just what you're doing tonight, be active community members. Um, be involved in you know various groups that we have around the town and everything like that. Um, when there are forums or you know impromptu things like this, by all means, please come out to that and voice your voice your concerns, your opinions, and everything like that. I mean, we're a very community-driven department, uh, made up of community members as well. So, um, yeah, I applaud you all for you know attending things like this and encourage more to come and do it. Tell me, tell me a little more about your training you know when you said I guess 80 or something break it down into what the categories are we, we just talked about a lot of paperwork and I I can verify that <laughs> that occurs but there's got what are the other aspects of it you know is, is it, uh, is so it uh, the legal <coughs> parts of it or just go, I'll let you in well there's kind of the part-time certification and the full-time certification are two entirely separate uh, things but they both kind of um, cover the same material, just one is much more in depth. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, there's criminal law, motor vehicle law, um, yeah. and there's more specialties yeah. like you know, yeah. um, crash investigation, um, crime, scene investigation. crime scene investigation, domestic violence investigations, yeah. sexual assault investigations, uh, courtroom testimony, um, how to conduct yourself inside the courtroom, criminal procedure. The subject of drug use and the push towards legalizing marijuana were also subjects raised by the audience. Yeah, it's definitely different than, than alcohol-related yeah. offenses, so it, it's much much harder to detect. On the PBT, you can or you can quantify, yeah. you know, that we have that threshold. So until you know, there's buccal swabs where you can test for THC, and mm -hmm. it'll only tell you if it's present or not, mm -hmm. but it won't. Be really tell you, you know, a saturation level or anything. Like that. Right, right. And and that was part of the governor's um, concerns with the legalization bill uh, was how it's going to impact highway safety. Yeah. Uh, they because there isn't not only is there really no way to test on site on scene, um, but it's also uh, difficult and onerous to get search warrants and blood work and chemists. We don't have the types of chemists we need in the state, so a lot of money is being sent on out-of-state chemists. And then to add to all of that, it's pretty unusual for an impaired driver to be only under the influence of THC. It frequently involves prescription medication, al some amount of alcohol, so you may have someone whose PBT comes back below the legal limit of 08, but then they also have THC in their system and maybe they're taking a prescription for some anxiety and disorder. And so then it becomes really like a soup of 
you know, how are we supposed to show that this person, it seems like common sense, right? You shouldn't drink, take prescription drugs and smoke pot and then drive. But, you know, it's actually not that clear cut. So, yeah, it's it's been tricky. And that's been one of the things the governor's been worried about. More such meetups are hoped for, both the officers and organizers of the gathering said at the end of it. For the GNAT-TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.